Yes, believe it or not, the world's newest aquatic mammal is actually a canine. That being the sea wolves, and what if I told you they only exist because of us? You see, the origin story behind this newly evolved subspecies is just as fascinating as it is tragic. So let's dive into the mysteries and expose once and for all how these sea wolves were created and what is truly going on with their incredibly unique populations. So for starters, what exactly are sea wolves? The term sea wolf refers to the subspecies Canis lupus crassodon, and they could be found on Vancouver Island along with most of northwestern Canada and southern Alaska's inside passage. Yet it wasn't always this way. Their descendants actually originated from mainland Canada and were forced out of their original homes onto these islands where they had to evolve primarily in order to feed on seafood. Yes, you heard me right, these wolves aren't going after deers or bison like you see in most nature documentaries. Instead, they're actually primarily preying upon the aquatic life found in their habitat, including but not limited to seals, sea otters, salmon, and even occasionally whale carcasses. In a lot of ways, these wolves have more in common when it comes to their diet and feeding habits with polar bears than they do to their mainland counterparts. Yet, unlike polar bears, these wolves are still just as social as their mainland cousins as they still form packs of up to 20 individuals, though they aren't always seen together. Also somewhat similarly to polar bears, these wolves could actually swim very far, with them being reported island hopping all the time, and one individual even being recorded swimming 13 kilometers out in the open ocean, likely in the search for new territory. Still, despite their incredibly unique aquatic abilities, they primarily hunt along the shore line. Just like the brown and black bears they share their habitat with, one of the main staples of the sea wolf's diet is actually salmon, which they will hunt very similarly to bears, where they wade along rivers for the spawning salmon to jump while trying to swim upstream. And during this occurrence, they are very easy to capture. In turn though, this does put them in direct competition with bears. Thankfully for these wolves, grizzly bears are primarily restricted to the mainland, with a lot of these islands only having a few to no individuals at all. This has allowed for these wolves to have much denser populations than that of most of North America's other gray wolves. In turn though, these wolves also have to face a lot of different struggles beyond just competing with bears. They also have to deal with us. One thing which is almost never talked about when you hear people discussing the sea wolves is how we contributed to their creation. While humans have been competing with the ancestors of these wolves for thousands of years, once Europeans arrived to the North Pacific coast, everything changed for these wolves' ancestors along with the other wildlife around them. Suddenly, large chunks of the forest which these wolves would have called home were chopped down in order to make cabins and lots of the food sources which these wolves would have preyed upon were hunted to near extinction, thanks to the increased demand for food and housing caused by the arrival of new American and European settlers. Thankfully, unlike many of the other mammals which inhabited the North Pacific coastline, these wolves were much more adaptable and learned that they could swim across from the mainland to many of the island chains surrounding the North Pacific in order to survive and avoid human contact. While on these islands, these wolves were able to avoid competition with both mountain lions and brown bears, they had to face a new issue, that being the lack of large food sources on these islands. Of course, bison, feral pigs, and feral horses were completely absent from these islands, and in addition to this, deer were pretty limited, so this left these wolves having to find out new ways in order to sustain themselves. While most of these islands lacked large terrestrial prey mammals, most of these islands in turn have incredibly abundant and healthy marine mammal populations, on top of being packed with incredibly vitamin-rich salmon and herring populations, both of which can make for great food sources for both black bears and even the sea wolves. Even though specific gray wolf packs can be incredibly niche in what sort of prey items they feed upon, gray wolves as a species are incredibly generalistic, and they could adapt to many different food sources depending on the environment they are present in. And in this case, they learned over time to develop a taste for seafood. Shockingly, beyond it just decreasing their size by about 20%, this dietary change has showed very little effect on the population's health overall. Some people even argue that the decreased fat ratios found in these sea wolves has actually allowed for them to catch their prey more easily, as the decreased fat makes them less buoyant and more capable of diving down to grab salmon and herring straight out of the rivers, which they now call home. 
Now in the span of only a few hundred years, these wolves went from eating primarily ungulate animals to eating mostly pinnipeds, beached whales, and fish, with sea otters even making up an occasional staple of their diet. And it is all thanks to this generalistic lifestyle which has allowed for these wolves to have some of the densest wild canine populations on the planet, with packs of up to 20 being common on some of the larger islands around southern Alaska and northern Canada's Pacific coast. Plus, with lesser competition and how abundant many of these food sources are on most of these islands, these sea wolves' population numbers and ranges size has also been increasing. As these islands still do have a limited carry capacity in how many wolves they could hold, many different wolf packs and wolf individuals have been found swimming from island to island, naturally expanding their territory to new places where wolves would have never been present beforehand. Yet during these travels, these wolves still face many risks, which regular marine mammals wouldn't have to worry about. For starters, the cold, rough seas of the North Pacific makes it incredibly hard for these wolves to travel from island to island, as they are not just at risk of hypothermia, but also drowning due to the much lower fat reserves which these wolves have compared to their mainland counterparts. Additionally, even though most marine animals are much more picky compared to their terrestrial counterparts, there's also a chance that the large salmon sharks and great whites found in the waters off of Washington, Canada, and Alaska's coastline could potentially pose a threat to these wolves. On top of that, orcas are also present in these waters, and transient orcas have been known to occasionally take out terrestrial prey. Still against all odds, these wolves have been found successfully traveling all across the North Pacific coast, which really goes goes to show just how adaptable these wolves are. Heck, just like coyotes, these wolves have even been found living incredibly close to human corners. For example, these wolves could still be occasionally found on the outskirts of Victoria, which is home to almost 100,000 people. Thankfully for the residents of Vancouver Island, Victoria, and the Alaskan Inside Passage, these sea wolves do not have any interest in going after people. While 10% of their diet still does contain fully terrestrial prey, due to the threat we pose, these wolves have no real reason to ever try to so much as attempt, let alone successfully hunt a human being. In actuality, no wolf species is really known to view humans as a food source under normal circumstances. That's not to say nobody's ever been attacked by a wolf, but rather that we shouldn't be afraid of them, and the whole myth of the big bad wolf is truly just as stated before, a myth. In actuality, no subspecies of wolf is aggressive, but rather wolves as a whole are incredibly adaptive social creatures which deserve our respect and also our care. Even though nobody intended for such a thing to happen, we are the reason why these sea wolves evolved, and sadly it doesn't seem like they'll ever readapt back to their mainland lifestyle anytime soon. And if we could push wolves into the sea, then who knows what other crazy impacts we as humans could have. Now, if you want to learn more about animals, I try to make Make animal mini documentaries every single week so please feel free to like and subscribe. YouTube is my main source of income and every little bit helps. So hopefully I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.